So what's my best side? Do I have a best side? Tell me what you think. Right, so, gonna quickly tell you a little bit about black and white photography today. I love it, so many other photographers love it. So I'm gonna give you my intake on what I think makes a good black and white photograph and why it is so popular amongst photographers. So, stick around. What's up everybody, welcome back to another video here at Better Media. My name is Nathan and it is an absolute pleasure to have you all here again today. Thank you so much for clicking on that thumbnail and coming and say hello. Before we get started, I am going to shout out my Instagram hashtag which I've tried to start and I would love for you guys to use it. It is BMPix2020 over on Instagram. So if you are a photographer and you are using Instagram, please use that hashtag and my plan is to sort of like shout some of you guys out at the end of my videos and stuff like that as well. So please, please, please go over to Instagram, use that hashtag and we can start connecting. Within this video, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how I like to edit a black and white photograph and why it's such a popular choice amongst photographers. You know, you, you hear an awful lot about, you know, black and white photography, it's artistic, it's gritty, it's this, it's that. Nine times out of 10, I think a lot of my black and white photographs are because at the time, once I've taken the shot, I feel when I put it into the edit that there's not much I can do with it color wise. So I have a look at it in black and white. Like some of these, I never planned for these to be black and white photographs. It's just that after I brought them back home and I had a look at them uh, in Lightroom, you know, I, I didn't feel that I could do much with it being a colour photograph. So I decided to hit the black and white button at the very, very top of Lightroom and see what it looks like there and have a bit of a play. And then, you know, they turned out quite nice. Now, black and white photography, it's, it is a part of art form. Like there is a way of showing that it, it brings something different to your photographs. You know, for example, if you've got a photograph which looks really, really good in colour, but then you take the same photograph and you turn it black and white and give it a few more little tweaks, both photographs look good, but both of them have their own type of story, the type of background, something that the viewer can interpret out of it as well. So it's not always necessarily a, a, a planned thought process, especially for me, but from time to time, I do look at doing a black and white shoot. When I did a couple of self portraits earlier on uh, this month or this, maybe a couple of months ago, I specifically wanted them to be black and white photographs. So I made sure I had a black background, I made sure I had a white shirt and a black tie. And when I was taking the photographs, I had in my mind already how I wanted it to look. So you can plan a really, really good black and white shoot that you know is gonna be black and white, so you need to make sure your lighting's right, your background's okay. You know, you're not gonna have, if, you, if there is color in the shot, that when you turn it black and white, they're not gonna sort of contradict each other, all right? So you, if you do plan to do a black and white shoot, you know, you need to have a bit more of a think about it. But then again, a lot of uh, photographs and photographers, you know, they don't, the black and white photograph isn't exactly something which they plan to do. So moving on to that, you know, it is always good to, if you're color grading and how you want to edit your photographs not working, give it a go in black and white, because you never quite know. So I'm gonna show you how I like to do a black and white shot. I'm going to choose a particular photograph from my uh, shoot that I did the other day. And I'm gonna show you how I turn it from a colored photograph into a black and white photograph. So here we are in Lightroom and this is the photograph that I'm gonna use. It's of my beautiful fiance, Phoenix Storm. So we're gonna go into development just up here. Click on that and that will bring us into the page where all of our tools are. So here it is. Now, one of the first things that I plan to do before I do any editing is I'll make sure I've got the crop correct. So I'm gonna go over to the crop overlay. And because I knew I was gonna put this up on Instagram, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure the padlock is locked. That way the four sides will stay exactly where they are. I'm going to go into the drop down menu here. I'm going to go onto one times one, which gives me that perfect square box, which Instagram loves. And then I'm just going to move it around until I'm happy with where it is. And because I've got the box clicked, the four square sides will stay exactly in the parameters that I need. So I'm just going to pull it about there, maybe bring it down slightly, not by much, until I am absolutely happy with the framing. Make sure she's central, nice. And then hit the crop overlay again, and that way I know that that is the canvas that I am working on. Now Lightroom has a fantastic way of just, all you gotta do is just click on the black and white words here, because you've got the color and black and white, so click on that, and it will bring your picture into black and white. Now this is where you can actually have a bit of a play. Now of course, if you go over to this side here, you do have some presets that you can play with just down here. And they sort of give you like a, a rough idea of how you might like to see your photo. So you can just sort of scroll down here. If you hover over, the little box up here will give you a, a sort of like a demonstration of what it looks like. So if you hover over any of the different overlays. It will give you a bit of an idea on how you would like it. Bit of a head start right? so that one's quite nice. So I'm gonna go into the black and white punch, and when you click on that, if you go over to your settings here, you'll see that they've been moved about a little bit. So it gives you a rough idea. So that is the preset. Now, of course, presets are a bit of a, a bit of a helping hand. So you don't really need to keep hold of them. So we're gonna take them all back off again. So of course, you can have your own little, little fiddle with it. Again, you've got the auto button, so if you like, you can tap that and then Lightroom will take a look at your image and it will give you some suggestions on how it thinks it would benefit. So I think that's a little bit too bright. So again, I'm gonna go reset all this because I'm not a big fan. All I'm doing is double clicking on the eye, on the uh, little counters here because I don't want to keep sliding up. So double click on it and it clicks it straight back to zero. Okay, but what I did like, I did like the punch. So I'm gonna go onto the punch like that and that's a nice sort of contrast between the whites and the blacks and the clarity's come up a little bit as well now the contrast has not gone up by six percent so i'm going to bring that up a little bit more and again it gives me just a little bit more of a sort of difference and a contrast i suppose you want to say so it's there and you can come down a little bit i'm going to go into the tone curve and i'll give it a simple little s curve so three points one two, three, I'm gonna bring that down slightly, and I'm gonna bring that up a little bit as well. There we go. So there we are. Already it's turned into quite a punchy little image. Now, if you go into black and white, which would be the HSL sliders, go in here, it will give you a bit of a sort of black and white. So the reds, oranges, and all those different colors, even though they still exist in the photograph, you can still manipulate them. Now this little S curve here is from the preset. So I'm actually gonna leave them alone. But again, you can obviously change them as well and it will affect your photograph in some way as well. But that was on, what was that? that was on 12, wasn't it? So I'm gonna go back to 12. There it is. Okay, and that's pretty much all that we are gonna do with that. So I'm quite happy with that look so far. And the preset helped and with my small adjustments. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the picture pop a little bit. So I'm gonna zoom in, you can go up to view, and you can zoom in by clicking here, or of course you can go control plus equals, this is what I'm gonna do here as well. So control plus equals, and it will zoom in slightly. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna play with the eyes a little bit, and I'm gonna play with the skin. So I'm gonna to go to my brush tool, now, if you go into this drop-down menu here, you've got all these nice little uh, different options here. Now, with the eyes, even though you can't quite see her teeth, I find that the teeth whitening helps a lot with the eyes as well. So I'm going to click on that. Zoom in a little bit more. And I'm just going to slightly brush in the whites of her eyes. Just a little bit, not by much. And as you can see already, because of the presets, So it's coming up here, see it's plus 40 with the exposure. And I come over here as well. 
have a bit of a paint onto the eyes also like that and that just makes the white of her eyes pop a little bit now if you want to see where you are in fact painting come over here click this box and you'll see it overshadows in the red now i've gone over slightly here now i don't want her irises or her pupils to be sort of covered so if we go down you can go into the erase brush here and then you can go across and then you can just erase out like that there we go so i'm just using the whites of her eyes that one there we go now what i am going to do as well though is that i am going to try to bring a little bit of clarity in her eyes so i'm going to go for a new brush go back in the drop down menu and iris enhance and again with that ticked i'm just going to paint on her actual what would be the color part of her eyes just like that tick that off so i can see what i'm working with and again i'm going to bring the contrast up a little bit or the exposure sorry bring the contrast down bring up the highlights again you're starting to see a little bit more detail in her eyes now bring up the clarity quite a fair bit so i'm going to bring the clarity down trial and error really so i'm going to bring that up there i'm going to bring the texture down a little bit like that i'm going to take down the dehaze as well all right so that's all i'm going to do with the eye so the best way of looking at the eyes is that if you zoom out by going control and minus so go right out to the image and then you can have a bit of a look on how you are changing the actual eyes itself so i'm going to click on that one and i might bring that up just slightly not by much click on there as well i'm happy with that one and then when you click off your brush you'll see that her eyes have slightly come alive a little bit so if we click back on that and if we come down to the bottom here you can click the brushes on and off so if you click that off you'll see that there is a nice little difference going on there you see boom so i am very pleased with how her eyes are now really popping out so next i'm going to do is i'm going to work on the skin all right so obviously she got perfect skin as it is but you just want to smooth it out a little bit just make it a little bit prettier honestly love i do think you have stunning skin i promise again i'm gonna go in the drop down menu now you've got two different ones here you've got softened skin light or softened skin have a bit of a play with both of them so i'm gonna straight off i'm gonna give a the softened skin part go i'm just gonna paint over her forehead a little bit I'm going to keep my red trail on so I can see exactly where I am painting because I don't want to. Now, if your brush is too big, if you hit the bracket keys, it'll go up or down. I'm just going to go back down to here, bring the brush up again, and just paint it around her cheek. And I'm going to leave her eyes alone. I'm just going to soften out the texture in her skin a little bit. Now, again, if you do mess up a little bit and you go over the lips like that goes oh no i've painted over her lips didn't want to do that it's fine you can simply go into the erase brush tool and erase that out so i'm going to go down so you gotta do is come over here make your way down to the erase again make sure you hit the brackets to bring your brush down to the size you want and just simply erase what you don't want painted a little bit like that you see so let's have a look at that so i'm going to take off the mask and you see we'll turn off the brushes and we'll just have a little look see what that's actually done to the face a little bit you see and it's just brought a little bit of smoothness to her skin so i'm going to press Control and the minus to come out. And that's probably just add a little bit too dark. So I'm gonna come back up here, bring this up a little bit, because I don't think that I need that much. Probably bring up the contrast slightly. Let's have a look at that now, shall we? And that's a bit better. Like that. So again, we've smoothed out the skin slightly. And we've brought up the eyes. What I might do as well, just get rid of a couple of those blemishes. So zoom back in, I'm gonna go into my spot removal. And I'm just gonna go over some of these little spots 
that she has on her skin. Zoom a bit further, because I think it's just a little bit. Yeah, look, there we go. Bracket keys again, bring it all the way down. Bracket key down again. Just dry skin on her nose. Now, if you're not happy where it takes its selection, you can always move it about a bit. Go there as well. Take that off. Control minus. Zoom out. And there we go. So I'm going to use the backslash key to go before and after. So I'm just going to click and we can have a quick little look at the before and after. See the changes that we've made. And I might just put a small little vignette around the edges. Sort of bring the focus a little bit into it. So I'm going to go on to the vignette. The amount, probably about 50, so minus 50 to bring a bit of a dark vignette around. Bring the feather all the way up like that. And maybe just add a little bit of grain as well. So go down to the grain because the grain always looks good or the grain looks really, really good in black and white photographs as well. So I'm going to bring up 30 and I might bring the size of the grain up to about 50. And it does. So it just as a tiny little bit of grain, which gives it a little bit more character, a little bit more like depth. And that is it. That's what I'm happy with. I'm not going to play around with that anymore. I am 100% pleased with how that picture goes. So just once again, hit the backslash key, look at the before and after. So that's the before. And that's what we've turned it into. And it's just has made a complete dramatic difference. And yeah. it that was the edit now I'm gonna say now that this is a personal taste on how I wanted that particular shot to look you may have actually edited it differently you may have done something different to the eyes do something a little bit different to the background do something like it is all down to your artistic license but I felt at the time that that was the best type of photograph or the best type of look for that photograph so you know, don't take what I say as gospel. You know, a lot of it was the, the heat of my pants. But when I was editing through those photographs, like I was moving those sliders up and down and, you know, making the contrast a little bit more, a little bit less. And even when I think I've got it, then I go and change, say, the curve. I might go back to the basics and go, okay, I like where the curve is right now, but there's something wrong within the highlights or the shadows and go back to it and maybe play around with the temperature a little bit. You know, a few of those photographs, they look better when I put a little bit of a cold blue tint to them. I did some of the shoot outside also, which wasn't the best idea I had because I wasn't in control of any of, of, of the light or anything like that. It was quite a sunny day. So for instance, this particular photograph with my sunglasses, you know, it was very, very grainy, very sort of like, because there was a very, a very harsh sunlight on it and I wanted to do something a little bit different. So in my opinion, it looks good. I really enjoyed the challenge of using such a, a harsh contrast bit of shadow coming across and I made it very, very sort of like my style. But again, it's something that maybe a few photographers would have gone, do you know what, it's too bright, too much sun and move on. But that is it. That is all I wanted to show you today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it gives you some sort of like little explosions in your head to create your own type of black and white images. And even if you do go out and you do take some photographs of your city or of your local neighborhoods, give it a look in black and white. Just give it a look. If you're not happy with the way the edit looks in color, turn it black and white and play with those blacks and whites and grays. Uh, add a little bit of grain, add a little bit of film fade. You'll be amazed at the different possibilities a simple black and white photograph can give as well. So. Apart from that guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you've stayed to the end. If you have, let's do a little bit of a game. Write B team at the bottom in the comments. If you write B team, that means I know you are part of the B team, the better media team, that's what we are. This wasn't plan A, this was plan B. So type that in there and I'll come and say a quick hello to you all. 
Please come and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. My tags are floating just about down here. So come and say hello. Don't forget to use the hashtag BMPix2020 if you are using Instagram. I look forward to seeing all of your wonderful, wonderful photographs. And while you're down in that corner, why not hit the thumbs up button and maybe the subscribe button. Come and subscribe, that way you will be pinged with new videos every single time I upload. But until next time guys, thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for hitting this thumbnail. I look forward to seeing you next time. I've been Nathan, you've been sensational. Mwah, mwah, mwah.